Ready? All right, welcome back to Fabrication 101. It's great to have you guys back in the shop, uh, or actually outside the shop this time. Uh, we're doing something a little different. This is my uh, new to me uh, car hauler. Uh, it is like a 9,000 or basically a 10,000 pound capacity trailer, uh, 18 foot with a dovetail, uh, pretty sweet. Brakes all the way around. It's a used trailer, but I feel like I got a really good deal on it. There's not really much wrong with it, but there is a problem. So the problem is that this trailer between the fenders measures like 82 and a half inches. We'll call it 82 uh, just to be safe. Um, now, I guess that's not necessarily a problem with the trailer. The problem comes with the Bronco. So the trailer measures 82 and a half. The outside to outside measurement of my Bronco uh, is about 80 seven inches and so that puts uh, my out the outside of my tires about two inches maybe three inches onto my fenders uh, and while these fenders aren't perfect uh, I don't want to tear them up I want to keep them as nice as I can for as long as I can so the Bronco's too wide obviously I'm not going to narrow the Bronco at this point in the game uh, so there's really a few solutions I guess there's three uh, one would be to take the fenders off completely uh, and leave them off. And I guess that's always an option. Uh, two would be to make drive over fenders. Uh, so take the fenders off or reinforce these ones uh, and make them strong enough so that the Bronco can drive over them if I need to, uh, which I would. Um, or three, uh, convert these into a tip out fender uh, where they will get out of the way. And I'm gonna go with the, the tip out fenders versus the drive overs for a couple of different reasons. The first one is uh, if this metal is wet and with only having a couple inches uh, of tire on each fender, uh, it's gonna be really easy to slip off of them um, and get kind of crooked and sideways. Uh, that's not really my biggest concern uh, or issue or reason for going with the tip outs. The, the bigger one for me is uh, I often use my trailers to pick up uh, material, steel tubing uh, for projects and things like that. And a lot of times the fenders get in the way of the forklift. Uh, and so instead of wrecking the fenders or just tearing them up and getting rid of them when I have the chance or when they need to be gone, I'm gonna take the time to convert these to tip out fenders. I don't think it's gonna be too difficult. I think in the, the scope of the work, uh, I think it's gonna be a wash up either way between tip out and uh, drive over fenders. Um, the nice thing is I'm pretty sure I can do uh, these tip outs without having to buy a bunch of material. Uh, I just picked up a couple of really simple basic uh, hinges uh, and my plan is to um, cut the fender off kind of level with the deck or maybe level with this bracket here uh, and build the tip out off of this or up here. I, can't, I haven't decided which one I want to do first um, either way, I don't think it's going to matter. I think the big question is making sure that the inside of the fender uh, can clear the tires and whether or not I have to uh, trim that or do something with that. So anyway, let's, let's, we'll take some more measurements uh, and we'll come back in just a minute and with a little bit more of a plan. All right, so here's the beginning of my plan. Um, ooh, that's weird. Apparently it doesn't look like that. Um, so the, I'm going to go ahead and cut the, the fender off level with the deck. And I'm going to do that because I feel like uh, that's going to give me more clearance for this back panel to clear the tires. Uh, if I hinged it way down here, if I hinged it down here, the, the pivot point would be way down here and it would cause the tires, the, 
the fender would swing out like that and a lot more of that back panel would catch the tire. Uh, as it is, I think I'm gonna have to trim it anyway, um, but we'll deal with that when we get to. Obviously, you can see I might have a little bit of repair work to do in there. stupid. I uh, punched a hole in my tire with my Sawzall. I was concerned about the sparks coming off of my cutoff wheel and I didn't really want to set anything around my yard on fire so I decided to use the Sawzall and I was trying to carry a pretty shallow angle with it and I was just getting to that point where I was like yeah maybe I should go ahead and pull the tires off when I when I heard it so that's a bummer. Fortunately, this trailer did come with a spare, although it would, I would rather not have to use it because I'm an idiot. Wow, that's crazy. So here's where I, I cut through the sidewall, which if I hadn't done it there, I probably should have, would have had to replace the tire anyway because I gouged it pretty good over here, but it wasn't leaking. All right, let's be honest. How many of you guys were watching me doing that thinking he's gonna cut that tire? Uh, I, I, I'm an idiot. Uh, comment down below if you thought I was gonna cut that tire and uh, maybe I'll give you a thumbs up or something. All right, well, we're quickly losing our sunlight. So let's try and get this fender cut off of here before the sun goes down on me. All right, so the fender's cut off. Um, that Sawzall did a pretty horrible job. So I got some work to do to clean this up. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this piece altogether. There's really no reason for it to be there. Uh, and now that I've got the fender out of the way, that shouldn't be too difficult. And I got to do a little bit of repair work because obviously this is a little bit floppier than it's supposed to be. Uh, there is a little bit of a dent in it. So I'm going to fix that, uh, tighten that stuff up. And then I'm going to probably figure out how to hinge this. I probably won't trim this part off until after I get a pretty good idea of how uh, everything's going to line up. these little eight pieces of eighth inch by about eight inches or actually seven and three quarters uh, length. I wanted to leave a little bit of room here at the end uh, for the piece that's going to go under this for the weld to stick up. Uh, you'll probably figure it out later. Uh, while you guys were not looking, I went ahead and uh, kind of did some repair work to this fender uh, where several of the spot welds had broken loose uh, and then went ahead and put that side on as well. Hopefully, uh, hopefully these are level. Um, I put that piece of one inch square tube across there to try to give it somewhat of a level look. Hopefully it's level enough. I, they are just tacked right now. Um, so hopefully they'll be okay. Unfortunately, uh, now it's time for probably the hardest uh, step in this whole project. Uh, and that is gonna be getting that welder out of my garage, out by the trailer.
Okay, with everything tacked, hopefully you guys can kind of see how this is gonna function now. Uh, I've just got these little, these are just, everything's just sitting here now. This, these aren't not tacked. These are just these little metal hinges. Obviously I've got some adjusting to do because this fender, uh, apparently when I went ahead and uh, welded, fixed the back part, I didn't have it closed up enough. So I need to adjust that a little bit. Uh, but that's not the end of the world. This side actually looks pretty good. Um, all right, so you can see these little hinges here. Um, they're pretty nice little hinges. They're not fancy. They pick them up for a couple bucks at the hardware store. Uh, they are meant to be welded in. I'm gonna have to trim them just a little bit because I do want the end of the, the barrel to come underneath the fender. Uh, but I think everything should work out pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get these, get these parts welded up here. Um, and then maybe get my hinge fitted to the, this piece first uh, and then come back and get it tacked into here uh, once it's all ready to go. It's kind of tacked in there and with the the tire in uh, you can see how it how it works uh, I do I'm gonna pop it back off I just barely did some tacks here this is the idea is that this is gonna be able to swing open uh, and get out of the way so that when I go to load uh, I can pretty much just drive over the tires uh, and not worry about my fenders um, kind of the weird thing is I the whole time I was doing this and even when I cut this off which I did a really hack job of it because I thought I was gonna have to trim this up 
to get it to clear the inside of the tire and it is actually uh, clearing with no problem. So uh, now I'm left with what I want to do to kind of clean up that backside edge. Um, I bought this little quarter round bar which you can barely see against the wood. Um, and I was gonna kind of do like a, a beaded edge, uh, but now I'm thinking I might get some uh, light angle iron and just do it across the bottom uh, so that it sits flush against here uh, and supports the backside of the fender. Um, and then make a little mounting tab here as well. So uh, I'm gonna have to pop this thing back off anyway um, so that I can do a little bit more, clean up that, that edge of that fender. Uh, but then it's ready to go back on pretty much for good. Uh, unfortunately, the weather is turning and it's actually rained on me several times since I've been doing this. There you go, now you can see how bad the clouds are. Uh, and so I'm hoping I, I can get some more of this done before I start getting rained out. So anyway, let's pop this fender back off. All right, well, unfortunately, I totally forgot to press play while I was welding this uh, piece of angle iron in. Uh, they're just a little one inch welds uh, every nine inches or so. Uh, it's some three quarter by eighth inch angle iron, a little heavier than I had or wanted, but it's kind of what I had laying around. And uh, I'm pretty happy right so far because um, everything I've used so far is stuff that I've had laying around uh, and stuff from old projects and just leftover material. So, uh, so far the only things I've had to go buy were these hinges uh, and then these uh, little pins that I'm gonna use as the latching point. Uh, and I need to make a little tab uh, so that they can weld the tab of weld to this and then to the frame of the trailer. Uh, so just slide the pin in. I'm gonna try and keep it nice and low so that uh, there's no risk of like puncturing or cutting a tire on it or something like that when the fender's open. But anyway, in the spirit of using up old junk, um, I found these, this stack of, I don't remember what I was making these for, some tabs for something. Uh, and I wasn't really happy with the way they were coming out. Uh, so I'll clean them up a little bit more, kind of round uh, the edge a little bit better. Uh, the hole's a little bit big, but I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and uh, figure out how much I want to cut off. I need to keep it so I can, so it fits inside of there. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, and then I will get these, at least two of them, welded onto the fender. Uh, get the fender tacked back onto the trailer, which is out there in the, the bright, sunny, windy, rainy craziness. Uh, and then we'll get these put on the trailer, uh, get everything finished, welded, and this side will be done.
All right, this side is all done. Tires are on, spares on, unfortunately. Uh, but everything looks pretty good and everything lines up and works, functions just the way it was intended. Um, I went ahead and threw some black paint on there as well. Um, looks pretty good. So when my Bronco drives on this thing now, uh, it should ride up on these tires just a little bit um, before it gets over. That way we're not that way we're not mangling my fenders. So one side down, one more side to go. All right, passenger side fenders all done. Uh, that went pretty quickly um, compared to kind of the, the learning process on the other side. I just get a couple of pins to pop. I may change these because they're not taking a whole lot to remove those, but swings out just like, oh, that one actually swings down a little further than the other side, but I think it came out pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, this is probably better because it's actually resting on the tire rather than sitting on the inside of the the fender right there. So I may have to trim the other side so that it rests down on the tire like this side does, but uh, I like that. Looks pretty good. Works pretty much the way I'd hoped. Um, so before I go, before I end this video, I want to see if anybody has any input on these things uh, and what what's the purpose of those. Uh, I'm, I gather that it's so that um, if you have the trailer unhooked, you can put those down. It's kind of like an outrigger for the rear uh, so that if somebody steps on it, it doesn't move. Um, I can't imagine you would ever want to try to load something with, without it hooked to another vehicle. Uh, I think you'd run, I think I'd be more concerned with the trailer moving rather than uh, just having the back end squat down. The other thing is when Right now, my trailer's not sitting very level. It's way down in the front because my truck's in kind of a hole. But when it's flat, uh, these things do not need to, they don't need to go down nearly as tall as this is. Uh, regardless, I'm gonna have to take them off at the very least because uh, those will get into my tires on my Bronco. So um, I'm, I thought about cutting them just shorter, just making them so that they're short enough. Uh, I don't know that I'll ever use them. So I might just take them off for now um, so hopefully somebody watching this will give me some feedback, give me an idea on, on how to use these properly. I've, I've never seen them before. They do appear to be put on by the, uh, trailer manufacturer, uh, either that or whoever welded it on there was equally as bad a welder as the rest of the trailer. So, <sighs> all right. So that's going to do it for this video. You guys, I appreciate you guys tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I do have some future plans for this trailer. Uh, I am going to make the deck a little wider um, just to kind of uh, take get as much out of it as I can. Um, probably not going to go uh, much more than about six or eight inches wider. The angle iron that I put the fenders on is about eight inches wide. So uh, I can go out to that width. I won't be any wider than the, than, than the, the fenders, so I should still be legal. Uh, it just gives me that little bit more usable deck space. But that's gonna have to wait. Um, I'm signed up to go to an event here in a few weeks with my Bronco, uh, which you guys probably can't see because it's dark in there. Um, so I'm gonna have to do, I got some finish up work I wanna do on that thing. Uh, kind of go over a few things on it. Unfortunately, I do have a rear shock leaking again, uh, which I'm super not happy about. Um, almost, you know, in my mind thinking I need to find some different shocks because. Uh, that'll be the third time that shock's been rebuilt and they're pretty much brand new. Uh, so I'm not, not real happy about that, but that's about it. I got some other things. I do want to finish up the air system that I started, put an air tank in it. Uh, a few other things. I did buy a, a intercom system, a radio, rugged radio system for it. So I want to put that in, uh, and just tie up a couple other loose ends before I take it on this trip. So. So anyway, that's going to do it for this episode of Fabrication 101. I hope you guys enjoyed it, uh, got something out of it, and I hope you share it with a friend, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. And in the meantime, do me, do, do me a favor, do you a favor, and go build something.